What is it that makes a successful fast food chain truly great? If you thought of the extortion of low-wage workers, the destruction of local ecosystems, and force-feeding the local populace dopamine-inducing foods to get them craving for more, you are about right. Today we follow the trail of Beep's very own American dream. Starting out with next to nothing and attempt to make a quarter million cats by the 50th day. Will we be able to become the next big commercial health hazard? Or will we succumb to the local racist salads? Let's find out. Meet Beep in the always beautiful hub. Beep isn't really good at anything in particular, but so was Colonel Sanders. Enough reason for Beep to believe in his dream to become a fast food magnate. The hub is an awful place to start though. Just look at this mess. Time to head out. And we ran southwest to the Czech city of Squin, a settlement wedged in between two mountains, making it easily defendable. But for Beep, the only thing that mattered was that it had copper mines, pretty close to the town. The perfect place to earn some initial cash. But first he needed some partners in crime. He recruited a capable fighter named Ruka in the local bar, and together they headed south through the swamp. Which is an awful place to navigate, like, what is this? Anyway, we reached the swamp city of Shark. Right here, some douchebag tried to attack us while we are trying to recruit people, which he quickly regretted. Thanks for the clothes. And look at Beep's drip. In Shark, we also found Green, who was too expensive to recruit, so we had to sell Ruka's weapon. Who needs a weapon anyway? Welcome Green, who had excellent crossbow skills. Beep had found his business partners, and together, the jolly trio headed back to Squin to initiate the most fun part of the whole playthrough, the manual mining grind. Mmm! It's awful. This is the process of very slowly mining the nodes around Squin, while I manually pick the ores into the inventories, while sometimes dodging these annoying hungry bandits, and then sell the ores to the local stores. And let me be clear, this freaking sucks. We bought the only affordable house in Squin for 7000 cats, which was a broken longhouse, and we repaired it using the building materials we bought from our mining money. We built a research bench, letting us research ore storage, which in turn made us able to build a copper storage. Now we could set the work orders to automatically mine copper and bring it to the storage. After letting them mine for a while, we set up Ruka to research some training facilities, and we built them on the roof of the headquarters. The bench press for strength training, and because continuously electrifying yourself apparently makes you a tough boy, a Tesla device to train toughness. We went into the local bar and recruited Fujin the medic and Rain the giant, who in fact is a freaking giant and a formidable warrior. We instantly set Rain to train to become even stronger. To be able to run the fast food restaurants, we need farms to produce the food cubes and dust witches. And those farms need to be protected. So we're gonna need Rain's muscles. Better get him pumped. Fujin the medic also had some research skills, so from now on he was going to be our full-time researcher. And let me tell you, there was a lot of research to be done, as we needed to make our very own self-sufficient outpost, able to output enough food cubes to supply all of our restaurants. The mining was bringing in an okay amount of money, which we used to finance the research books as well as the food for the guys, and the building materials needed to build even more training equipment. Pretty soon we were able to recruit the first loser, I mean the first low-wage worker into the group. Bep and Austrian. Sadly I found out that because they are shacks, they are really bad at mining. But we set them to mine anyway to open up Beep and Green's schedule for some electrifying toughness training. In the meantime I sent out Ruka to go look for more recruits. Preferably high for workers because they have great laboring and farming skills. But alas, they seem to be pretty rare. Not even in the swamp town of Shark or any of the Hiver villages I could find one. I sent Ruka all the way to the Great Desert to hopefully recruit some Hiver slaves in one of the United City towns. And perchance on our way there we found the perfect spot for the food cube farms. Just look at the fertility of the soil. Oh yeah. However, it was in Holy Nation territory. We'll get to them in a minute. In the city of Stoat we recruited Nails. And together with Ruka they traveled to Hang where they recruited an engineer called Shark. We bought all of the slaves in the local slave shop and ran out to the city to release them. And one of them, Fang, decided to join us. Yeah, we also recruited the warrior Ridley after we bought some more slaves and a bunch of them joined us. We got Doc, a human, and Nevo, Ilk and Wrestling, who were all high for workers. Hell yeah. Get ready to make some money. In the meantime, back at Squin, the guys have been busy training, mining and selling the ores. Fujin crafted a training turret so we could start turret training people. 
to protect the future outpost. We didn't have any money saved up though, because we needed to buy all the slaves and research books. So as Ruka's recruitment party got back to Squin, we spent the next few days setting up some iron ore mines, making us able to also sell iron ore for money. At the same time, the warriors of the group kept training their strength and toughness skills. By day 17, we were making a good amount of money. It was finally time to get going and found the farms that will make Beep and the crew rich. We used the money to kit out the warriors with the best weapons and armor we could afford. And we used the remaining money to buy the initial building materials needed to get the base going. Okran's pride, here we come. Our team of fully kitted out and trained up pioneers went over to the valley, while we kept the ill-equipped low-wage workers in Squin for now. And we looked for the best spot to start building the farm. This wasn't all that easy, because we needed arid soil to plant the cactus on, as well as green soil to plant wheat and green fruit, as well as an iron node. And all of that in a relatively small area where we could put a wall around it. Fortunately, after some prospecting, I found a perfect spot that had everything we needed. And we started off building a stone mine, a stone processor and a wind generator. With the stone processor, we could turn the mine stone into building materials, which enables us to actually build the rest of the farm base. Now, about the Holy Nation. They are a racist group of zealots who hate females. Shacks, hivers, skeletons. Well, they actually hate everyone who is not a human male. And even if you are, you always need to carry a copy of their holy book, The Holy Flame, with you. The other races, and the women, are allowed to be in the Holy Nation territory, but only under the supervision of human males. So, since we are in Holy Nation territory, we sent out Fang to one of the Holy Nation cities and quickly bought him a copy of the Holy Flame. Since we don't have a wall around the base yet, which is just a stone mine at this point, we are very vulnerable to attacks from the outside, which proved when a large group of hungry bandits decided to attack us. This was our team's first actual fight, like not versus a training dummy, so I was kinda nervous. But it actually went pretty well, and we managed to fight them off, with nobody getting KO'd or killed and Fujin was able to easily heal the minor injuries that we did get. We continued building an iron refinery, so we could now craft the second most important building material, iron plates. Now it's just a matter of putting in tons of hard work to get the farm base going. Beep felt that his dream of becoming a fast food magnate was finally starting to take shape. We called in the low wage workers to the new base location to help us out. With their help we were able to double up the production of building materials and steel plates, which significantly sped up the process. We were still really exposed to the potential raiders, so as soon as we could we designed a nice wall around the base to increase our chance of survival. But sadly it was already too late. We were so close to completing the wall when a group of bandits approached us. They threatened us and we had no other choice to engage them. This was a fight we were not ready for. Like, at all. It was brutal and although we managed to fend them off, we took heavy losses. Almost all of the low wage workers were KO'd and a lot of the other ones were wounded too. Luckily Fu Jin had great medic skills and managed to save everyone. However, the attack did damage our productivity, since a lot of the guys were still knocked out or in a recovery coma for at least a few days. Our wall builder Nivo was also KO'd, so I forced Ruka to finish the last defensive walls and fit them with turrets. With the base now secured, we could finally start looking at the production of fast food. We started by building a house where the kitchen was going to be built. We sent out Shark, who is also a white human male, to get himself a copy of the Holy Flame. This made him able to go around the Holy Nation towns to start buying food for the crew. And green fruit and wheat straw needed to sow the first farms with. This was kind of a problem because the local cities didn't really have any wheat straw. And Shark had to run back and forth a lot to the local Holy Nation farms to buy up everything that came available. After a while we got enough green fruit to start our very own farm. Oh, I can already taste the money. We sent Green away to get cacti in Admark, which I saw in the shop there. We needed to start planting cacti too for the dust witch recipe. It took a while, and a river raptor attack because I left the gates open. But we finally got the farms running. With these we can use the crops they produce to build more farms and exponentially increase our yield. The low wage workers were hard at work at the farms and Beep himself cooked up some vegetables to keep the crew fed for now. In the new kitchen area. The very core of this operation. In the meantime Fang set out to establish the very first McFood cubes in the city of Blister Hill. Just look at the design. Isn't it cute? We weren't ready for sales though, because the farms needed to be built up a lot more to be able to produce enough food. So we farmed, and farmed, and built more farms, and farmed even more. 
until we had so many farms that the farmers were almost constantly at work. In the meantime, Fang and Nevo set out to establish the second McFood cubes in our old base in Squin. Back at the farm base, Beep started the production of the very first food cubes by baking bread from the flour that readily milled up from the wheat straw. And he used the bread and the locally sourced green fruit to create the first food cubes, the brown gold. In the meantime, the low-wage workers were working on the farms, which were now getting pretty ridiculous. Just look at all the farms. It's never enough. By day 34, we had a good amount of food cubes and dust witches. And we did burn through all of our savings. We had to hurry up to get to the 250k by day 50. So, time to supply our first McFood cubes. All according to fast food tradition, Fang went out to hire a local underage guy named Bart. And he filled up his inventory with food cubes and dust witches. And headed out to the first restaurant in Blister Hill to supply. And there it is, the first restaurant, ready to receive its customers. At first it seemed like nobody could afford our kinda overpriced food cubes, until the holy paladins and sentinels came in, who actually bought a lot of the food cubes and dust switches. The plan actually worked. And just look at the amount of money we are making. And from this point on, the business snowballed like crazy. Back at the base, Beep and Green were busy cooking all of the food, while the low-wage workers were out in the field hardcore farming. Fang had been running around so much that his athletic skills were so high that he now was the fastest runner in the group. So he went out to supply all of the restaurants. We had one in Squin and we also opened one in Stoat, in the United Cities. However, we found out that most of the people in these towns were not able to afford our exquisite meals. Apparently only the Holy Nation military was wealthy enough. So sadly we had to shut down all of these franchises. We did however focus on the new franchises in other Holy Nation cities. And we started businesses in Bad Teeth and Stack. And the sales over here were crazy. Just look at them go! The automation process wasn't perfect, but I micromanaged the base enough that it worked out pretty well, which made a great output of food. Fang was running around like crazy to supply all of the franchises. What a guy! In the end, we were able to make 250k cats by day 47. Beep was proud of his crew. With their sweat and tears, and 25 hours of my life, he managed to turn this group of random castaways and slaves into a formidable workforce that made him the richest food magnate in all of Kenshi. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did making it. And a special thanks to my patrons, you guys are great. While you're still here, give the next video a shot. Until next time, bye.